Uh, thanks. So, uh, yeah, Stefan Biene. Um, I'm actually happy to have so many people here, so thanks for coming. Um, so, uh, a couple of words about myself. Um, I've been a, a Python developer and, and also an advocate since uh, the early 2000s. Uh, currently working for Scooby, um, which is uh, an ebook subscription service. So, you pay a fixed price per month and you get unlimited reading as much as you like. Um, and besides that, I'm a consultant uh, and trainer. So, I give uh, Cyclone trainings also in house. Um, and I'm working on a, on a couple of open source projects um, from which you may know me. Uh, the most well known two are maybe AlexML and, and Cython. Uh, Lupa and a couple of others, uh, you'll find them on the page. Um, okay, uh, since uh, so Cython is, is used a lot in, in, in big data applications, uh, and so I would like to, um, to give you a bit of, uh, of background about uh, what we're doing at Scooby. Um, so, uh, as I said, it's, a, it's an ebook subscription service, and we actually have a very large catalog. So, there's more than 130,000 publisher titles, and it's actual publisher titles, not like self publishing something. Um, and that's all books that are available to everyone, every subscriber, uh, anywhere, anytime. You can just click on a book and read it. Um, and once you have a catalog of that size, uh, it becomes kind of, kind of tricky to uh, keep it navigable. Okay, so it becomes difficult for people to to find their books, uh, find the books they want to read. And so that's a problem we're, we're, uh, we're faced with. And um, so the question is, how do I find my next book, right? So there's a lot of, of stuff you can do. Uh, you can have recommendations, editorial recommendations, but you know, they don't really scale um, to, to you know, large user bases. Uh, personal recommendations, you can crowdsource that. Uh, and certainly you're trying to automate a lot of stuff. Um, so you can do a similarity search uh, between users, between books, uh, data mining, and uh, so that's uh, a, a major thing um, that we're currently working on. And uh, that's where you come into play. You can, you can actually help us make our book lovers happy because we're hiring. Okay, so go to that page, uh, find a job, and come and join us. And talk to me in the recruiting session, for example. Uh, so for the, the actual topic of the talk, um, so the topic is Cython, uh, which is, well, what is Cython? It's a couple of things. Uh, first of all, it's, it's, uh, it's an open source project. Uh, you can find it on Cython.org. Uh, it's a Python compiler. Uh, it's almost a Python compiler. Uh, so it translates Python to C plus C API calls uh, and features uh, static code optimization for you. It's actually more than that in that it's an extended Python language which allows you to write uh, fast extension modules for CPython without you know, resorting down to, to C and writing uh, C API calls yourself. Um, and it's a very nice way for interfacing uh, Python with C and C++ libraries. Uh, and over the years, so Cython is actually uh, a relatively old project. It was originally forked from, from Pyrex. Who of you knows Pyrex? Yeah, a couple of people, okay. Um, so, Pyrex was a project that was begun by, um, by Greg Ewing somewhere around the 2000s. Um, uh, and in 2007, uh, Rod Bradshaw and I uh, forked Pyrex, um, which had kind of come to a certain stall at the time um, and founded the Cyton project. And since then, we had a, like a humongous success and huge rise in, in our user base. And uh, so it, uh, over the time, it's really become a, a major pillar of the, the Python ecosystem, uh, especially the, the scientific Python ecosystem, but it's more general than that. Um, so by now, there are, there are like tons of Python code out there. And it, it's certainly, it's, it's kind of a technology never. So as, as a programming language, it really helps people uh, to get their job done. <laughs> So how, how do you use Cython? Um, so this talk is kind of split in two parts, okay? So one is, one is a general introduction, I'm gonna tell you a bit like, around the, about the surroundings and stuff and how, you know, how it works on the surface, and then I'll show you a couple of examples afterwards. So uh, in order to use Cython, uh, what you do is you write Python code, or Cython code, as I'll explain later. Um, Cython then translates this into C code, so you need a C compiler, 
uh, to build a shared library uh, for CPython, and you, then you can just import it and, and work with it there. So um, as you can see, there's a, there's a certain, an additional hurdle compared to like writing Python code, importing it done, right? So you need a, a compile and build step in between. So let's compile some Python code. And it's just a, a stupid little uh, example. So we have a class here, an init method, uh, some, some method that, you know, gets a, uh, so you, basically the idea is to put a, it has a function in and then you call it from this method here. Um, and that's what we do down here. We instantiate the class and then we call this method, make the function be called a couple of times and that's it. So really stupid code. Uh, just a couple of lines of Python code. And uh, when you run it through Python, it'll spit out a file, a C file of about 3,300 lines of code, okay? That sounds huge in comparison. Um, and uh, so in order to get there, it's actually quite simple. We have a script, uh, Cythonize, so you can just say Cythonize minus i built in place, in place, i. Um, uh, Cythonize minus i and you work a file, uh, the Python script, and then it's just gonna translate it, it's gonna translate it to C, and then uh, it'll build your uh, extension for you. And then you can, as I said, import it and work with it. So why is that so large? Um, in these 3,000 lines of code, um, there, are, well, there are lots of portability signs. So lots of stuff that says, if the C Python version you're compiling against is this, then optimize something in a different way than for different C Python versions. Uh, very often that's the case for Python 3 and Python 2 differences, but also for new features that came in in your C Python versions. So um, your code will actually adapt to the C Python version you're currently uh, building it against. And if it's a newer C Python version, which have a, has a certain feature, it's gonna use that. Otherwise, it'll just fall back to some, some fallback implementation. And it might be slower, um, but it's still gonna work, okay? Uh, the next thing we do is we copy all the original source code into C code comments. Uh, so you can actually, actually, when you read the C file, uh, you can actually find your entire source code in there, which makes it easier to figure out what's happening when and which source code line contributed to what, you know, huge amount of C code. Um, and uh, in any case, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely a lot of code that you really don't want to write yourself and for which you want to use uh, a code generator. So we write C so you don't have to, okay? Um, uh, building the whole thing, I already showed this Cython I script, which is really nice, um, but it's kind of the, the thing you would use for local development. And when you want to distribute your code, uh, you'd use distutils, and you'd um, let these distutils build the extension module for you so that uh, users who want to install your package uh, have no problems in, in building it locally and you know, getting it all set up. Um, we also have a helper for that. So um, basically what you do is you would import the Cythonize function, um, after which the, the Cythonize script is modeled, and then you would just say uh, Cythonize some source files uh, and it will build the extension. So the, the metadata, the extension metadata for you and uh, it will compile that for you, okay? For the more involved cases, uh, where you want to build against uh, external libraries, for example, so you have you know, linker set up and maybe include path and stuff like that. Um, you can also uh, use this, uh, the, the standard distutils um, way of setting up the, the build metadata uh, through the extension class. Uh, you can configure it, and, uh, just look it up in the distutils config, um, configure it yourself and then pass that into Cythonize. Okay, and then it's just gonna do the right thing for you. Okay, so I already mentioned that the code uh, Cython generates is, is very portable, actually. So um, uh, it, it generates C code that compiles with all major C and C++ compilers uh, on all major platforms, so Linux, Mac, Windows, and some others are, well, less often tested, but generally work. Um, and uh, in all C Python versions from 2.6 uh, through 3.5, uh, which is currently not released, but yeah, it's, it's on the way. 
uh, partly also in PyPy. Uh, so PyPy is support for um, the C API, and we have a lot of uh, special cases in the Cypher generated C code, which say if compile and force PyPy, uh, then do this, otherwise do something else, um, which uh, help in A, making it work at all in PyPy, and sometimes making it less inefficient. Um, so uh, the language syntax of Python uh, itself follows Python 2.7 with lots of feature back backports, so whatever comes in from Python 3, we just adopt it as long as it doesn't conflict with any Python 2 features. And if you want to have actual Python 3 syntax, uh, can, you can use the usual uh, um, future imports, so from future import, absolute import, uh, print function, this kind of stuff. Or you can just say, um, leave a, a compiler directive at the top of your source file, which says language level three, and then you get Python three semantics for your file. Uh, for language features, uh, so Python language features, um, so one of the, the tests we're on in our uh, continuous integration test is uh, the C Python regression test suite of Python 2.7 and 3.5. And uh, we're at about 98% uh, success, so um, it's pretty close to full, full Python language coverage. Um, what's definitely in there is like everything uh, you would normally know, like classes, control structures, um, uh, loops, try finally, uh, so exception handling, um, comprehensions, uh, we have support for async and await, uh, which will be new in Python 3.5. Uh, star unpacking, same thing. So this extended star unpacking, which is new in Python 3.5. Uh, so that'll all be in, in the next Cython release, which is currently in beta. So we have a, oh, I pu published a, a beta release uh, yesterday. So the first beta is out for, um, for version 23 of Cython. Uh, and we have support for profiling, tracing, coverage analysis, uh, like lots of, of tools that help you understand, analyze your code and make it better. Okay, a couple of deviations. Um, we don't have frames inside of functions. Uh, who, who here knows what frames are? Okay, that's definitely a clear mi minority. Um, so if you never came in touch with frames, uh, then this one usually hurt you. Um, You'll notice uh, frames in a couple of places, and that's uh, tracebacks, because tracebacks are actually built on frames, but we support those, okay? So you'll get a, a nice traceback uh, from your Cypher code if there's an exception being raised. That's all supported. Um, and then there are obviously, yeah, there are bugs in every uh, piece of software, and you can find them in the bug tracker. As for speed, um, so Cypher generates actually very efficient C code, and uh, there are many static and optimistic optimizations that it applies to your code. Um, it generates optimized code for standard types and for many built-ins that you would use, and has static type inference within, uh, within functions. Okay, so um, it, it kind of can, can decide what you do and when, and it understands your code in a way uh, that's so it has better static knowledge about your code than uh, the normal C Python interpreter would. Um, uh, one way we measure speed is with the Python uh, benchmark suite. So there's a, a bunch of, of software packages that were assembled um, to measure the speed of uh, the performance of uh, Python programs. So that's actually real world code, including stuff like Django, some, some template engines. Um, uh, what else is in there? Some, yeah, some couple of, couple of um, computational little benchmarks, um, very different, different, uh, uh, so lots of, of, of different stuff uh, that, um, that, you know, you can run to, to see how fast your interpreter is. Um, and we run that in Cython, and the problem with that is a bit that the applications that have been tested there they are a bit outdated, okay? And many of them were written uh, in a pre-Python 2.6 area, uh, and that, that means they don't use many of the, so any of the, uh, the more recent Python features. Um, so uh, it's a nice benchmark, but it's, it, it's not very telling for any uh, recent application that you would write. 
Um, so in that that benchmark suit, we're currently about 1.3 to three times, depending on the benchmark, uh, faster than Python 3.5. Um, and hand tuning those benchmarks a little uh, to make Python generate better code for them gives you something like four times to 50 times. Um, and how do you do that? Well, static type declaration. So Cython is actually a language that uh, that's, that supports optional static typing in addition to uh, being Python. Um, and so in your code, um, you can say, uh, you can declare variables, for example, having a certain type, uh, and that's a, uh, an extended syntax, uh, which says cdef some type x for a variable, variable declaration. Um, so that's extensions to Python language, which then are only understood um, by the Python compiler, not by Python. Um, what does that do? Well, once Python sees these declarations, it can drop your code from uh, ob object operations into plain C code. Okay, so when it knows that a variable has a, has a C integer type, for example, it can say, okay, adding a value to the variable can be done in C. Don't need to wrap any objects, so that's faster. Um, and the nice thing is that it's optional typing, so you can um, uh, employ these, these uh, type declarations exactly where performance matters, and that's the way we made these, uh, these benchmarks uh, way faster than uh, what you'd get from simply compiling the Python code. Um, especially from computational loops, uh, usually the speed up you get is somewhere between 100 and 1,000 times. Okay, okay. Uh, the actual topic of today's talk is um, talking to native code. Um, so I won't talk much about speed ups, I'll talk more about uh, how do you connect to external libraries, how do you talk to them, uh, how do you use C from Python. Um, so, uh, since Cython code translates to C code, uh, talking to native code, uh, or external code, external code written in C or C++ is actually completely natural, right? It's totally straightforward. And so that makes uh, Cython a foreign function interface, but like the cool way. Um, you can think of it as Python with C data types, and the nice thing that's, that the compiler gives you is that these types uh, converge back and forth from Python objects automatically for you, okay? Uh, Cython understands pretty much all C data types and most of C++ own data, data types, uh, and that includes C functions, pointers, structs, arrays, and so on. And C++ classes, templates, uh, operator overloading, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, okay. And that's the end of the first part, and here's the demo. Um, first of all, C features. Uh, who does not know the iPython notebook or the Jupyter notebook? Okay, everyone does, that's cool. Um, so in case there's someone here who has been working on it, so who's been, been uh, contributing to the code base, thank you everyone, it's a great tool, it's wonderful. Um, and has Cython support. So uh, all you really have to do is, um, uh, you open a, a Python uh, notebook, and then you say load x Cython, which enables uh, Cython support. And currently, as you can see, um, I'm using Python 3.5 and Cython 023 better one, so the newest release. Um, and so here's an example. Uh, this is what um, uh, Cython code looks like. Uh, so I start my cell here with double percent Cython which tells the uh, Jupyter Notebook that, you know, here's the Cython cell and please compile this for me and then run it. Um, and I can compile it and it just works. And what I did here is I define one little Python function. I define a Python function uh, with a typed argument. So the argument uh, that's being accepted is must be a C int. That's what I declared here. Uh, then I have one function here, which is a cdef function, which translates into a plain C function, okay? And then the, the last thing I have here is a cpdef function, which is kind of a C function with a Python wrapper, okay? So the Python wrapper is automatically generated for you. And now I can uh, call my Python function, which is what I want. I can uh, call the typed Python function, um, which does the same thing. Uh, with the difference that if I pass in something else than an int, 
um, ABC, for example, then I get a type error, okay? And I get it on entry, so it is automatically checked for me um, when calling the function, okay? Um, okay, uh, then I can try to call the C function, and I'll see there's a name error, so the C function doesn't actually uh, appear at the module interface, because it's a C function, right? It's not a Python function. But what I can call is um, the cpdev function, which uh, then internally calls the C function, and uh, that's, as I said, uh, a C function with a wrapper around it, so the wrapper becomes visible to Python code. Okay, a uh, bit of function JIT compiling. We have a decorator um, called Cython compile. Uh, so this is uh, not a Cython cell, it's a Python cell, and you can import the Cython module and decorate a function, a Python function with a decorator, and then uh, run that, and when you call the function, uh, it executes, and the result is down here, um, it executes uh, the compile function for you. And you can see that uh, because uh, calc is not just a Python function, it's a runtime compile function, okay? So that's uh, how you can do, you know, runtime compilation um, from within Python. Okay, uh, calling C functions. Um, as I said, it's, it's entirely natural for, uh, for Cypher code to talk to C libraries. And the way this works is, um, well, we have a standard of, uh, a couple of standard declarations that we ship that includes a large part of libc, libc++, uh, the C Python, C API, uh, so lots of C functions that you can simply import use, done. Um, so the, works, uh, the way it works in Cypher is you say from libc, so the um, libc library, there's a module in there called math, so the math, math uh, header. Um, from libc, c import math, and then you have access to the uh, libc math functions. And you can say math sine of pi by two, run that, and it'll give you one. One nice thing you can see here is I didn't just say percent percent uh, Cython, I said Cython minus A. Um, and minus A uh, means annotate, and what I get out of it is an annotated uh, HTML version of my source code. Um, and that allows me to see what Cython made of my source code, okay? Because uh, now here you can see it's uh, exactly the source code as you saw above, but when I click on the, on the line with a plus here in front, it'll show me the C code gen that it generated for it, okay? So I can uh, see, um, so what it does here is, uh, it does the computation pi by two, uh, calls the C sign function on it, then calls the C API function on it, um, which uh, converts the, uh, the double, C double result uh, to a Python float object, and then it calls a helper function which prints the result, because that's what I said here, right? Prints. Uh, the result of sign, okay? Uh, the reason why it's a bit yellow compared to the other lines is that there's interaction with Python going on. So there's actual um, Python object operations here. Um, as you can see, the result is calculated in C, but then afterwards I create a, a Python object from it and call it the print function, and that's everything that, that you know, adds up um, to the to the uh, darkness of the, the uh, yellow line here. So um, it's pretty dark, meaning uh, quite an intensive uh, Python operation going on. Okay. Um, memory allocation, same thing. Uh, we have uh, the standard lib headers uh, readily declared for you. So you can just say from libc standard lib c import malloc and free, and then you, call, you can call malloc, uh, you have to check the result, obviously, if it's none, uh, if it's now. Raise a memory error if it is, and otherwise, in this case, we just free it, okay? Works for me. Okay, um, what you should do, though, uh, especially for, for little amounts of, um, of memory that you need, uh, is use the C Python heap memory management, um, because that's pre-allocated memory, so it doesn't have to talk to the operating system, and it's faster for small memory areas. Um, so what I'm doing here is I replaced uh, malloc by pi malloc. Uh, same thing, check the result. And uh, here I'm assigning some values to the memory buffer uh, that are allocated, and then uh, do a little computation, print the result, and free the memory. Okay, important here, try finally, 
because even if something goes wrong here, uh, I want to be sure that I free my memory. Up, executed, it. it gives me four. So it's adding up uh, one and three, okay? Okay, um, one nice little feature that came in in 022, I think. Um, so last release Cython version um, is automatic wrapping of C functions. Uh, so here I'm, I'm C importing uh, the math and standard lib uh, modules from libc and take the sign and hoi function, that's actual C functions, and assign them to Python variables, okay, which makes them objects. Um, so I can execute that uh, and you can look up what it does. Uh, so here, um, it actually calls a, a helper function that it generated for me, which takes the C sign function and wraps it in a Python callable for me, okay? And then it just adds it to the uh, global module dictionary so that it becomes available to Python code. And then I can just call it from Python code. Okay, so pi sign of a half, it's apparently this. And I can take the HOI function, pass in a byte string, and it's one to three. Okay, as a number. Okay, it's actually as simple as that. Um, Okay, external libraries. Here's a bit more uh, of an involved example because uh, what, so talking to libc is nice, but it doesn't usually get you very far. Okay, so there are lots of helper functions in libc, uh, but what you normally do is, uh, so you want to talk to your own code. Okay, so you have some C code lying around or an external library that you want to wrap that you want to make available for Python, um, use it from your Python code, and so um, this is how this works. Uh, so I chose Lua because I've also, uh, also written uh, a Lua wrapper for Python, which is called Lupa. Um, and uh, so I happily copied some code from it for this presentation. Uh, so there's a Lua header file um, and I copied some, some declarations from it, which is a, a state so that holds the, uh, the runtime state of the Lua runtime. I can create a new, a new Lua runtime uh, and there's a function for closing the Lua runtime, so for cleaning up, and I can load uh, code into the runtime, execute it, and then, uh, so Lua is a stack machine, so I have some function to, uh, to operate with a stack and to call a function on it and do stuff. Okay, so that's all the declarations that are needed. Uh, important bit here is um, it's not complete. So the Lua header file is definitely way larger than what I've copied here, but that's all I needed. Okay, and that's all that Titan needs to know. Um, and once that's declared, I can actually just use it. Okay, so here's a function, uh, run Lua, a Python function, and I pass some, some Lua code in there, uh, and then first thing I do, I convert, make sure it's, it's a byte string, so I convert it to a TF8 with Unicode, create a new Lua runtime, uh, raise an error if that fails, load the code into Lua, uh, raise a syntax error if that fails because that's activated in the Lua parser, um, and then get a result from that, call it, so execute the Lua code. If that fails, I just raise a runtime error saying, you know, your code was broken, please try again. Um, and then here's a very simple uh, return value conversion, so uh, I'm expecting a Lua number back, uh, raise an exception if it if it's happens to be not a number, otherwise I just convert it, so there's a helper function for converting the Lua number uh, back to a C number, and then I return it. Okay, so that's all I, I need to execute Lua code in Python, in, or in, in Cython in this case, to make it available for, for calls from Python. Okay, uh, again, try finally. So there's a bit of cleanup. After creating the runtime, the Lua runtime, I need to make sure uh, that I, I properly clean up afterwards, regardless of what happens. So any exceptions shouldn't you know, leave a memory leak or something, or leave the, the runtime in memory. So I'll just clean everything up afterwards, and then I'm done. Okay? Okay. Um, so one thing I'm doing here, now I take some, some Lua code uh, and pass it into the function, and at the end I just say, uh, I just so I create a function, Lua function, and then I call it at the end and return the result. Um, did I execute that? I didn't, okay. I was executing that, executing that. Uh, and it gives me the uh, 10th Fibonacci number, apparently, so it's a recursive version of Fibonacci. Um, 
And I can benchmark that. That's going to give me about five milliseconds. Uh, and the thing I didn't mention is uh, why does this, this actually work, right? So I'm, I'm using Lua code, but I'm not linking against it. Yes, I am. So I'm, what I'm saying above here is when this compiles in this utils, uh, and I'm creating my shared library for Python, please use this include here to find the header file, use these libraries to link against. Okay, so I'm specifying that directly in my module. Um, and now uh, I linked against Lua 5.1, and I'll, if I replace that by Lua JIT, which I also have installed, um, all I have to do is replace the include directory. So for fun, I'm just gonna do that directly in my source code. I could also do that in my setup file, uh, but since I'm, I have an IPython notebook, I'm just gonna do it in place. Uh, compile again, uh, run the code again, same result, and it should be a bit faster now. Yeah, it's about twice as fast. Okay, just by replacing the Lua implementation. Okay. Okay, what else do we have? A uh, little bit of nice syntax, um, C arrays. So um, uh, C arrays are actually quite clumsy in C because they're basically just pointers. And sometimes C knows the length, but doesn't really care about them. So Cython knows the length of a C array and it has better ways to deal with them. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm creating two C arrays uh, of, of integers uh, length 10, A and B, and then I'm assigning uh, to a slice. So I'm saying five, I have five values on the right and I'm assigning that to a partial slice uh, to, of the array, of the C array. Uh, then one nice feature is I can assign by value so C doesn't support that, right? When you assign uh, an array to another array var variable, it's just gonna assign the pointers. Well, it's actually gonna give you an error and say you can't assign arrays. Uh, so Cython does array copying for you, so it assigns by value. Very nice feature. And then uh, I'm just assigning to the, the other half of the array a couple of more numbers. Um, I can just iterate over the array by slicing it. I could iterate over the whole array by just saying for i and b, here I'm just interested in the, the first three numbers, so I'm iterating over those, uh, printing those, I just one in this case, uh, and then I'm returning B. Um, so what you see here, so I created a function for it, okay, so this is all I do, um, and you see the iteration um, actually uses a C loop over the array. Um, then we have here the assignment, which is translates to a mem copy, uh, pretty straightforward code. Um, this, the assignment, the partial assignment here, uh, translates to a temporary array and a mem copy. Um, so this is all stuff that Cython does behind your back and it just does it right. And then when I call my function, uh, you see the iteration here, two, three, four. So iterating over the first three values. Uh, and then when I'm returning the array, it automatically translates uh, to Python list and I get the uh, mapped Python object as, as a return result. Uh, okay, I'm gonna split that, and I'm gonna just gonna show you a bit of um, C++. Because uh, you may not like C++, and there are lots of people who don't like C++, but it's actually really nice when used from Cython. Um, and that's the only way I would ever use it, okay? So, uh, same thing here, load X Cython, uh, same Cython version I'm using, and now, uh, first I have to tell Cython that this is supposed to be in, um, uh, compiled in C++ mode, which enables all sorts of C++ features, meaning operator overloading, meaning uh, class support, um, templates, and so on. Um, and as I said, we ship declarations with Cython that includes libc++, um, uh, including, for example, what I'm using here, the vector class. Uh, so I can just say from libccp, uh, cccp vector, c import the vector class, and uh, here I'm defining a Python function uh, with a stack allocated uh, C++ vector object. And then I can just uh, insert a value. Uh, there's a pushback method, whoever came up with that name, uh, on a C++ vector class, and then I return it. What do you think that returns? Someone saying tech fault down there? Uh, nope because uh, <laughs> that's not what it does. Um, it returns a list. Okay, so that's a straightforward mapping from a 
C++ vector to Python this. So whenever you um, uh, con make Cython convert a C++ vector or a C++ list for you, any, any container it knows, uh, it'll just con convert you to a list for you or to a so C++ map to Python dict and so on. Um, so you get the, the obvious representation in Python as a default, okay? Okay, um, another little example, a vector. Uh, so uh, the nice thing here is that it, uh, Cython does the automatic uh, memory management for you. So this is a stack allocated uh, C++ vector, meaning it goes out of scope, it dies, okay? All handled. Um, you can do the same thing with an extension type. So this is the way uh, Cython uh, defines extension types. Anyone implemented a, an extension type with a C API? Okay, a couple of people. Um, what you do basically is you take an existing uh, extension type, copy over all that it has, because it's like, like this amount of C code, it's all, all struct definitions and stuff, and then you adapt it for your needs, because you're never gonna infer that the, the way this works from the documentation. Okay, so you just copy it over, adapt it. Um, in Cython, you don't need to do that. Okay, you just say CDEF class, and it's done. Okay, you have an extension type. Um, here, uh, I'm adding a, a field, so an attribute to the extension type, to the, the um, object in this case, um, which is a C++ vector, and that makes, uh, and that ties the, the memory management for the C++ type to the lifetime of the Python object. So when the object is created, it creates a C++ vector for you, and when the object dies, it will clean it up for you, okay? Okay. Um, so there's an add method, which just calls pushback and representation. Um, and uh, so I can execute that. And then uh, the wrapper is actually just implemented as wrapper of values uh, of the C++ vector. And when I execute this, um, uh, as you can see, the representation of the class becomes a list because that's the uh, representation of the C++ vector converted to Python object. Okay, so just use a wrapper of list, and that's what you get. Uh, okay. Um, okay, I'll just leave it at that, and yep, continue that over here. So conclusion, um, Cython is a tool for translated Python code to efficiency, uh, and it's very easy to interface with external native code. As you've seen, you just you know, write the code and it just works. Um, you can use it to speed up existing Python modules um, by concentrating on the optimization rather than a complete rewrite, which you'll have to do if you, you know, write it in C. Avoid writing C, just do it in Cython. Um, it allows you to write C extensions for C Python in actual Python syntax, in using Python semantics, using Python f language features. Um, so it allows you to write C code without actually writing any C code at all. And you can use it to, to wrap C++ or C or C++ libraries uh, in Python syntax just by you know, using objects, dealing with them. Uh, doesn't matter if it's a Python object or C++ object, it looks all the same, feels the same. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Thank you Stefan. Uh, we have time for one question. <laughs> on my video, short questions. Are there any questions? Down here. Yeah, okay, yeah. anyway. <laughs> oh, I was wondering uh, when calling C or C++ code from Cython, um, what is the level of truth of support for the new standards of C and C++? For what? For, for different, different standards, standards of C++? C++, C++ 11, uh, so on. So uh, it depends on your C++ compiler. So mm -hmm. Cython doesn't really care. I mean, it can be C++ 11, it can be C++ 90 or whatever there is, so uh, just depend, depends on your C++ compiler. Mm -hmm. I think the new C code generates C++ code. Yeah, the, so it, um, question was, does it generate C code or C++ code? It depends, so it generates C code uh, for almost everything except when you're interacting with C++ objects, in which case you get C++ code for it, okay? So it'll, it knows about operators, for example, so you, you know, operator class will translate into A plus B, um, so you get C++ for code for everything that's C++ usage in your Cython code. Okay, thank you.
Thanks. Thanks again.